Well, if you're into electronics as a hobby like I am, it's always nice to have some inexpensive toys to play with. The Chinese lately have been coming up with several inexpensive but high quality little devices that make your life easier if you're an electronics hobbyist. Here's one of the latest, a little ICL8038 based function generator. It can generate sine waves, triangular waves, and square waves. The frequencies of this on device can generate run all the way from 5 hertz to 400 kilohertz. It comes as a kit, so you definitely got to put it together. It's really not that difficult. There are a few minor glitches in the instructions that I'll go through. And first, I'm going to take a look at what's in the kit, putting the kit together, and then we'll take a look at the performance of the device. You can find this on a device on eBay for a little over eight bucks, including shipping. I'm here to tell you, boy, that's one heck of a deal for what this little gizmo can do. Let's start off with seeing what's in the bag, and then we'll discuss a few construction details. First off, here's the instructions. They look like to me they've been copied one too many times. They're a little hard to read, and there are a couple errors we're going to get into a little later on in the video. All in all, this was the most disappointing part of the kit. I thought everything else was pretty darn good. Here's a little printed circuit board. It's two-sided, made very high quality. The next item coming out of the bag is a little case that goes with it. It's got a little paper wrapper on both sides of the plastic. I'm going to go ahead and just dump the rest of the contents out since it's all loose, small parts. Then I'll fiddle through it and pick out the ones we want to take a look at. Now, when you're doing this, I recommend you do it on the floor or do it on a place where you've got a contained area so none of these little parts can get away from you. As I said before, the instructions aren't the world's best. Be a real good idea to make sure that you've got a photo off of eBay of an assembled unit. You're definitely going to want to know a few details off that one if you miss what I'm talking about in this video. First on the list of gotchas, there are four potentiometers at the bottom of the board. The one on the far right as you're looking at the unit is different. Make sure you don't mix these up. They are numbered on the bottom, so make sure you pay attention. As you can see here, things on the instruction sheet are a tad faded, so it does help to have some basic knowledge before you proceed with this kit. Here's the next little gotcha in the kit. There is no R12 on the instruction sheet, but there is on the board. In this case, R12 is a 30K resistor. R11 and R14 are 4.7K resistors. Here's where R12 goes on the board when you put it together. 30K resistor again in this case. There are four different values of tantalium capacitors used in the little kit, and they're all marked. There's a little number on the side of them. Here's a little quick shot with all the sockets, resistors, and capacitors soldered on the board. And here's a shot of the finished unit without the case of the ICs being present. Now when it comes time to take the paper off, here's the best way I found out to get the little plastic wrapper off the clear plastic without damaging the plastic. You just take a pocket knife and push up on the edge. Each edge just needs to be peeled back just a little bit, just enough to get your fingers on it and then grab a hold of it with your fingers and it should pull right off. You may get a chance to pick two or three pieces off of it, but they'll be easy to get off once you get the main piece off, as you see here. I didn't have too much trouble with mine. Just a matter of taking a little time and peeling off little separate little pieces as happen to separate from the main piece. You shouldn't have any trouble at all getting this little clear plastic paper off. Well, yeah, what I'm going to do right now is uh, give you a little tour around the device. First off, the power plug. It's a standard coaxial plug. 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter. There are actually four ICs on the device. The first one I'm pointing at here is a little voltage regulator. Three pin, 7809 would be an equivalent. These two little potentiometers allow you to adjust the quality of your sine wave. This first IC is a little voltage inverter. It's a ICL7660S. Actually it's given about seven negative volts to the 8038 as well as the little amplifier. The next IC is uh, 8038 itself. It's operating split power supplies between 9 and about 7 volts negative. Next over on the board is a range select jumper switch. It has four positions, 5 hertz to 50 hertz, 50 hertz to 500 hertz, 500 hertz to 20 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz to 400 kilohertz. 
The next item over on the assembled device is a little jumper switch that allows you to select between sine waves and triangular waves. And the last of the four ICs is a TL082CP op amp. It's a JFET unit. Very good, works perfect for this application. It provides excellent application and really good buffering being a JFET. We have four control potentiometers on the bottom. The one on the left is a duty cycle control. Next one to the right being the frequency potentiometer. Then we have the zero offset potentiometer. Followed lastly with the amplitude potentiometer. There are three output wire connections. The one on the top is the ground. Next one down is the square wave output. And followed lastly with the triangular wave or sine wave output. And as somebody said, well that's all well and good, but how well does it work? Here's an actual sine wave on my oscilloscope. As you can see, it's pretty good here. It is definitely prone to ringing at the top and the bottom of the sine wave. This particular trace was taken at 400 kilohertz and maximum amplitude. I have wired it directly into my stereo input and it did give off a good signal. And you can definitely hear it ranging as you turn the frequency knob. And here is the scope trace at 400 kilohertz. I'm taking it from maximum to minimum and then back again up to maximum. The square wave varies from 0 volts to 12 volts, so it's definitely not TTL compatible. With the square wave, only duty cycle and frequency are adjustable. The other two controls have no effect. It does have a real good triangle wave output, but most of you I'm sure are interested in sine wave. It does have a good stable output of that one. There's definitely a little bit of ringing at the top and the bottom of the sine wave. Here I am ranging it top to bottom at near maximum frequency. Okay, here in this section, I'm going to basically just run the frequency up and down just a little bit to give you an idea what that looks like. And I'm also playing around with the duty cycle control. Here I'm tinkering with the offset control, running it up and down through the maximum range of 9 volts to minus 7 volts. Next here I'm working with the amplitude control, running it back down toward near minimum amplitude and then back up to full amplitude again. And pretty well damp the signal out, taking the amplitude all the way down near to zero. Okay, now I'm going to adjust the volts of division from five back down to two and then do some ranging with it. You know that the sine wave is pretty good, definitely not perfect, but pretty good. And in this case, when I was doing this video, I wasn't getting any ringing on the sine wave. As far as the device and what I'm going to use it for, yeah, it's pretty good for what I need. My plans are checking speakers and checking mics. Might play around with it doing a little hearing test on myself and the wife. I also have some plans to determine some inductive resonances based upon inductive resonance with a specific capacitor. All in all, I'd definitely give it a two thumbs up, especially for the cost of what you're getting. I'm sure I higher dollar unit will give you a higher quality sine wave, but let's get real here for eight bucks, what do you expect? And actually it delivers more than what I thought I was going to get. Well, that's about it for this one. Hope you're liking what you're seeing. If you do, give me a like and consider subscribing. I just might have something else coming along here real soon you're going to see. So until that pass cross again, y'all take care now. Have a great day and y'all come back now, him. Yeah?